today's lesson, we'll be talking about section 5-6 um, in simple harmonic motion. Um, now, the definition is a sinusoidal equation that models the displacement of y of an object at time t described, describes simple harmonic motion. Okay? So, um, two equations that you'll use are y equals a sine of wt or y equals a cosine wt. Now there will be vertical um, translation um, but but don't worry about like having to write that part of the equation right now. We'll add that on. It's just adding or subtracting something at the end. Uh, the w represents the same thing as k. Um, it's just um, a value that we use um, or the variable that we use for it instead because here, because we're talking about time, so that'll be our x-axis kind of. So x-axis will be in normal numbers. So to get the radian measurements that we want um, from our sine and cosine, um, the w or omega is what it's called, will have the pi values um, attached to them. Um, A still stands for the amplitude. And then 2 pi over this new omega equals the period. And then we also have something called frequency, which is pi divided by, um, or sorry, I wrote that incorrectly there. Oop. Should be omega there over 2 pi. So period and frequency are reciprocals of one another. Okay, so let's go to the first example. So for example one, a spring hangs vertically from a hook supporting a weight at rest. The weight is pulled down 4 centimeters and released. After 0.75 seconds, the weight is pass a weight is passes, or sorry, should probably say weight passes the resting position and continues to oscillate vertically. Write a function which describes the weight's vertical position at t seconds. Use the sketch. So here first I like to draw a picture. Um, so here's that my spring and my weight at resting position. I pull it down four centimeters and then release. It takes me point or takes the weight point seven five seconds to get back to resting position. So what that tells me um, is that my amplitude will be four because I'm going from the resting position to the minimum of four centimeters. Um, also, the 0.75 seconds tells me a bit about my uh, about my period. Now, remember what I said that um, x is not going to be in our, our x-axis is not going to be in radians anymore. It's going to be in uh, time. So, any unit of time that you're talking about, some minutes. Uh, usually, with this stuff, it's in seconds. Um, so. Here, he said that it took 0.75 seconds to get back to the resting position, so we pulled it down 4 centimeters, so that means we start here, and then we release it. So then the next point would be at, let's say this is 1 second right there, so this would be 0.75 seconds. Now, remember how when we were given two consecutive points and asked to write a function? So here, the minimum to the equilibrium is a fourth of the graph. So since I'm given fourth of the period, um, I can complete the rest of the graph by doing the same measurement. So another 0.75 seconds would be 1.5. So then that would take me to the max of 4. Okay. Now also remember that with this, um, we don't worry about wind resistance or like air resistance or friction. Um, those are physics topics that we won't discuss with harmonic motion. So, um, so for that, we'll assume that it'll oscillate back and forth continuously at the same amplitude forever and ever. Okay. So that's why I can just say it goes to four. And then another um, 0.75 gets me back to the middle. And then another 0.75 gets me to the m minimum again.
Okay, so then this would be the picture. So like I said, if this is a fourth of the graph, 0.75 seconds times 4 to get the full period would give me 3 seconds, which makes sense going from 0 to the value of 3 for my picture. Okay, so that's my period. So now, I think I have enough information to help me fill out what my equation is going to be. Now, remember you can choose whatever um, sinusoid you want. So you can put use positive sine, negative sine, positive cosine, negative cosine. But here, um, I usually go with the ones that are easiest or um, wherever you're starting because it, since I'm starting, I'm starting at zero time usually, so that means that I'm not going to have to worry about phase shift. So it just takes out a value that I have to figure out. So in this case, I'm going to have to look at negative cosine because I'm starting at the bottom or the minimum and I'm working my way up. So that means it must be negative cosine. Our amplitude, like we said, was 4. And then we have a value t. And then here, Notice how we start in the middle, or like at zero for height-wise. So then that means we have plus zero. You don't have to write anything if it's zero. So now all I need to find is this omega value, the w. So using my period and my uh, formula for period, 2 pi over w, or omega, I solve. So cross-multiply gets me 3 omega equals 2 pi. And then divide by 3 gives me an omega of 2 pi over 3. So like I said, that's where the radian measurement comes into play. Because if I plugged in like a number 1 in there, it wouldn't give me anything for cosine. So I wouldn't be able to graph these later on because you'd have like the value of 3 for time. And cosine of 3 is non-existent. So unless you're talking about degrees... So that's, that's why we need the radian measurement here, okay? So the next one I'm going to give you is example two. I want you to try it first, so go ahead and pause the video and then read the problem, do it on your own, and then I'll show you what I came up with in a few seconds. Okay, so here example two says Jordan and Lydia rode the ferris wheel at the fair they climbed an eight foot staircase to enter their seat at the lowest point of the wheel others boarded after them and when the ride began they were even with the wheels axle heading upward the wheels radius is 40 feet and it makes one complete rotation every 40 seconds write a function that describes jordan and lydia's height above the ground at time t seconds use a sketch okay so here i first drew my picture my ferris wheel so the middle of the ferris wheel is at 48 feet if i and the bottom is at eight feet because i had to climb an eight foot staircase to get there so then since the radius is 40 feet the top is also 88 feet okay they also told us that one revolution or one rotation is the same as or takes 40 seconds to complete um, now also notice that we are starting here at this point, not at the bottom, because we rode it to this point or even parallel with the wheel's axle so that um, other people could board. And then the ride began, so the time of the 40 seconds started. Okay, So here, for my graph, I start at 48 at when time is zero. And since it tells me that it takes 40 seconds to complete one rotation, that must be the period, if you notice, up here. So then I use the period to help me find my omega value, which ended up being pi over 20. So as I sketch my graph, I go up first. So at 10 seconds, I'm at 88 feet. 20 seconds, I'm back to the middle. So back even with the wheel's axle. At 30 seconds, I'm at the bottom of the Ferris wheel at 8 feet, and then at 40 seconds, I'm back to where I started.
Okay, so then my equation will be the amplitude of 40 because that was the radius of the wheel. I use sine because we started in the middle and went upward with our picture. Okay, so that's what I chose. Remember, you can choose whatever you want. That was just the easiest one to pick. And then, like I said, using the period, I solved for my omega value to find that it was pi over 20. And take that times t because there is no phase shift since I'm starting at zero time. And then here there is a vertical shift because we're starting in the, mi the middle of the Ferris wheel is at 48 feet. So then I should add plus 48 to my equation to um, compensate for that. Okay? Have fun.